Hey guys, Mr. Riss here to help you out with the 2.1 through 2.3 review worksheet. Uh, we're going to go over each question. So if you have any questions, you know, make sure you ask, but you know, you can always rewatch this video, go back, um, see the problem over again, but we'll try our best here. Uh, keep in mind, you can do a lot of these problems on Desmos, uh, but we're going to try to do it without Desmos just to kind of build our skills a little bit here. All right, so first question is asking us what kind of transformations happen uh, to the f of x parent function here to this graph here of h of x. We got x minus 5 squared plus 6. All right, so if we look at here, um, we know that we got y equal, this is in vertex form, a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, so our vertex here is going to be at 5, 6. So instead of being at 0, 0, this graph is up at over 5, up 6. All right. Also, if we notice here, A is 1. So that means the graph hasn't changed at all. It hasn't stretched or flipped or anything like that. So we are over at 5, 6. So there is no shrink. There is a shift of 6 units up. Yep. 6 at the end makes it go up. It's not reflected. It's shifted to the right 5. That's correct not stretched, not shift. That's literally, oh wait, no, I can't read, can I? Good thing I have an eraser. We are shifted six units up, not down. Uh, we are not shrinking it or stretching it. We're not moving to the left and there we go. Uh, so the answer should just be D and F on that one there. Pretty easy. All right, next one here. We're gonna use the vertex here and the intercepts to sketch the graph. Okay, so let's go through and then try to graph this out here. So the vertex, if you remember, we got y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So our vertex is going to be at h, which h is the opposite of what's happening to the x. If it's x minus h, we got x plus 1. Technically, that's x minus a negative 1. So our h is at negative 1. In our case, the number on the outside here is at negative 1. So vertex is at negative one, negative one. And now we can find our other points um, by knowing that we have the axis of symmetry right here. And if I want to find like another point, the y-intercept, I can make x equal to zero and plug that in. Now, this isn't like standard form, so we can't just say it's going to be negative one. We actually have to plug this in. So if we had uh, y equals 2 times 0 plus 1 squared minus 1. Let's see, that would be 2 times 1 squared. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So that means the y-intercept is at 0, 1. And because it's symmetric, it's also over here. So the graph is a parabola, such. There we go. We can also use Desmos here too to get those points. And so, oh, the domain and range. Let's talk about that too. The domain, any parabola is all real numbers. So from negative infinity to infinity. And then the range. All right, how low does this graph go? It goes down to negative one and then goes up to infinity. All right, so next, these are going to be the problems that you would typically see on the test. First thing I'm going to do, you know, have a problem here. Given the parabola in vertex form, so we know the vertex. Once again, vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where we got to find our a, our h, and our k. Well, h and k are really nice and easy to find because they are right there. So it's going to be x minus 2 squared plus 4. The problem is we got to figure out, okay, what is the a? Well, we can use the x and the y from our point with the h and our k from our vertex in this equation. And what happens if we plug all those in? We don't know a, but we can plug everything else in. So here's our y equals a x minus h plus k. So we plug those numbers in, and we can solve for a. So, all right, let's see, three minus two, that's one squared. We square one, it's just still one, so we got one a plus four. We can minus that four over, so a would be negative seven. 
So the equation that has this vertex and goes through the point is y equals negative seven times x minus two squared plus four. Okay, next, if we have it in standard form to find the vertex, we'll put it in vertex form. Now, the thing you have to remember here is that to get the h is negative b over two a. All right, so we look here, we have b is negative b is four, and then two a is negative one. So we got negative four over a negative two, so the h is two. So we know that the vertex is at two, something. Now to find the k, we're gonna take this number here and plug it back in for the x's. So k is going to be negative two squared plus four times two minus 11. Take your time with this here. You have to square the two first. Two squared is four, and then make it negative. So that's negative four. Then do, okay, four times two is eight minus 11. All right, so let's see, negative four plus eight, that's four. Four minus 11, negative seven. There's our vertex. So we're doing this without a graphing calculator, but I will allow you guys to use a graphing cal calculator in Desmos on the test. So I guess you could have just typed that equation in and found the vertex that way, but you know you will have to put things in vertex form later on. All right, so same thing, find the vertex of the graph and determine whether the graph opens upwards, downward, find the intercepts and sketch the graph. Okay, not too bad here. Um, so same thing here, let's find the vertex form. Let's put this in y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, so we can find our h by doing negative b over 2a. Negative b is 6, and a is negative 1. So negative 6 over negative 2, and that is 3. So the vertex is going to be at the point 3, comma. We can find where it goes by plugging 3 in for x. So our k is that negative. 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 5. Uh, let's see, that would be 9, make it negative, so negative 9. 6 times 3 is 18 minus 5. Uh, negative 9 plus 18 is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. So 3, 4. All right, now if we were going to sketch this graph, One, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's a vertex. Now we know that this graph opens downward because A is negative. So the graph's gonna be a sad face. And we can find the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is where the graph, or our C equals zero. So our y-intercept is at zero, negative five. All right, so let's graph that. That'd be one, two, three, four, five. All right, now, remember we have the axis of symmetry, which is right here. So if we have one point that's at zero, negative five, and it's three away from our axis of symmetry, we would have another point here at six, negative five, that's three away. There's the graph. Okay. Hopefully this isn't too bad. All right, next. We have a story problem involving this. So we got a projectile that's uh, uh, fired straight up from the ground with initial speed of 160 feet per second. Crazy fast. All right, the height h is after t seconds. So we have this, find the maximum height of the projectile. So the thing about this graph is gonna go like this. Maximum height is just another name for the vertex. All right, so if we can find the vertex, that's gonna tell us the maximum height. So our h is negative b over 2a. So when we have this equation here, keep in mind that our b is 160. And we don't have a c, but our, we don't actually need c at all. Our a is negative 16. So negative 160 over negative 32. And that h would be 5. So the vertex is at 5, comma. And then to figure out 
the other part, the k, we're going to plug that 5 in. So negative 16 times 5 squared plus 160 times 5. And then we can put a plus 0 at the end because there's no. All right, so 5 squared is 25. 25 times negative 16 is negative 400. 160 times 5, that is 800. Add those together, that would be 400. So our vertex is at over 5, up 400. So if we're going to answer this question, the maximum height, 400 feet. All right, next, this is the part here, these next two, to find the parabola here, we're definitely going to want to use Desmos here. This is what we have to do to set this up. So we actually have to make three problems because every single one of these we're doing y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. None of these are the vertex for sure. So we're going to use this equation. So we're going to plug in like this first one. I'm going to plug 0 in for x and 3 in for y. So we get 3 equals a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. Now, normally this would just cancel out when we get c equals 3 which is good, but to find A and B, we're gonna need some more. So I'm gonna make this Y equals zero A plus zero B plus C. So we're gonna use the matrix at the end. Okay, next, let's do uh, the next one. We'll use this X and Y. So our Y is five equals A times two squared plus B times two plus C. This is 5 equals 4a plus 2b plus 1c. And then last here, we got another x and y. We got negative 3 equals a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. So negative 3 equals, that'd be 9a plus 3b plus 1c. Okay, so if we're going to turn this into a matrix, remember we take each one of these, we go A, B, C, and then the number. So we got 0, 0, 1, 3. 0, A, 0, B, 1, C, 3. And then we got the next one. We got 4A, 2B, 1C, makes 5. And then the last one, 9A, 3B, 1C, negative 3. All right, now the technique that we're going to have to do is the R graph. And that's going to give us our answer, our solution. So I'm going to open up Desmos here. Uh, let's see, we can do that one. No, that's not it. Desmos. Let's, uh, we have to do the Desmos uh, matrix one. Now this might be a little messy on the screen, but hopefully you can see here. I want to make sure I still have this graph up. Okay, so I can barely read this, but I'm going to make a new matrix make it a three by four matrix. And I'm gonna type these rows in here. So we got zero, oh, didn't meant to press enter, meant to press over. Uh, zero, one, three, four, two, one, five, and then nine, three, one, oh, one, negative three. All right, we're gonna click the R ref, matrix A, and there's our answer. Negative three, seven, three. Okay, so let me go back. Negative three, seven, three. Oh, no, wrong problem. Here we go. Negative three, seven, three. That's the important part. This other part, all those ones and zeros, that's just the identity matrix. So our answer here is this first number is our A, so it's Y equals negative three squared. Our next number is our B plus seven X, and our last number is our C. And there's the equation. Let's do that one more time. So good practice here, making sure we understand how to do this. So we're gonna write the equation of the parabola, given the X intercepts, and it passes through this point here. So same thing, we're gonna use the X and the Y here. Um, so we got zero equals uh, A times negative one squared plus 
b times negative 1 plus c. And so that means we got 0 equals negative 1 squared is 1. So we got 1a minus 1b plus 1c. And that equals 0. Okay, next. Same thing, we got 0 is our y. So we got a times 5 squared plus b times 5 plus c. That 0 equals, we got 25a plus 5b plus 1c. And then last one here, 1 negative 40. Okay, so that'd be negative 40 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus a c. So negative 40 is 1a, 1b, 1c. So we're going to take all those equations, put them in a matrix here. We got 1, negative 1, 1, 0. Make sure you have that negative there. It makes a big difference. And then next we got 25a, 5b, 1c gives us also 0. That's okay. And then lastly, we have 1a, 1b, 1c, negative 40. All right. We're going to R ref this. Use row echelon form. RF stands for. All right, so let's go to matrix here. I'm going to make another matrix, a three by four matrix. Type the numbers in. We got one, negative one, one, zero, 25, 5, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, negative 40. Ooh. All right, and we'll do RF. And I'm going to do the new matrix B here. And there we go. 5, negative 20, negative 25. 5, negative 20, 25. So I'll write my answer. Now, I want you guys to show your work like this on the test. 5, negative 20, negative 25. I think that's what it was. My memory is so bad. I'm forgetting this already. Is that what it is? Yeah. Show your work. Uh, so that way, like, maybe you made a mistake. You wrote it here, but, you know, you typed in a positive one there. I can give you partial credit. You know, you made one very small mistake. It ended up messing up the whole problem. But, you know, we can live with this. Okay, so the equation here would be y equals our a is 5, so 5x squared. Our b is negative 20, so actually we'll make this a minus 20b, or 20x. And then our c is negative 25. We'll put a negative 25 there. Okay, hopefully not too bad. All right, so now we're moving on to section 2.3, which was solving and factoring quadratics. So when it comes to uh, factoring in quadratic, if there's no number in front, all we have to do is think about, okay, what two numbers multiply to give us the end number, negative 28, add together to get the middle number of negative three. All right, and let's see, that would be uh, 28, negative 28, uh, is that four? and Seven? Yeah. So negative seven and positive four is the winning combination. And so this would be an x minus seven times an x plus four. There we go. Now, when it comes to solving, we do three steps. We set the equation equal to zero, which it is already. Then we factor it. Okay, so what two numbers multiply together to give us negative eight? What two numbers add together to get the middle number negative two? And that would be a negative four and a positive two. So we would get a, we'll keep the variables the same. We've got a P minus four times a P plus two equals zero. And then we are going to take each one of these factors, set them equal to zero. So, okay, add the four over to the zero, P would equal four. On this one here, if we take P plus two, make it equal to zero, we're going to minus two, and you get negative two. So there's the two solution. And then we got a story problem here involving the same technique. So we have an observation deck that stands 200 feet above the valley and the deck six below. If an object is dropped from the observation and its height is given, like how long would it take for the object to be only eight feet above the valley floor? Okay. So a couple things, this is 220, that doesn't matter, or 202. 
If we want the height of the object to be eight feet above the valley floor, that means we're gonna take the height equation set it equal to eight. Okay. So this problem, don't overthink this, it's not too bad. We're gonna solve this by factoring. So we're gonna minus the eight over, and we get a negative 16 t squared. We minus eight over, that is 100 and, uh, I can't think, 144. All right, next we need to factor this. And I'm going to show you guys a trick that we can do. All right, so if we want to factor it, technically this is negative 16t squared plus 0t plus 144. And we would have to think about, I'm going to have to grab a calculator, what two numbers multiply together to give us, uh, let's see, 144 times negative 16 is negative 2,304 and add together to get zero. All right, now, if you don't know your factors of 2,304, which uh, I don't know why you don't know, but actually, if you don't know that, we can do a little trick here. Here's the trick we can do is technically we can divide, and this is only if you can do this, we can divide every single one of these by negative 16. Now, you can only do this trick when you're solving. You can't do it when you're factoring, but you can do it when you're solving here. And okay, if I divide by negative 16, this just becomes a 1t squared. 0t divided by negative 16 is still 0t. All right, negative or 144 divided by negative 16 actually comes out pretty nice. It comes out to be just 9 or negative 9. And then 0 divided by negative 16. So now what we want to do is figure out what two numbers multiply together to give us, well, there's no number in front, so just negative nine, add together to get the middle number zero. All right, and that would be negative three and positive three. All right, so we get a t minus three and a t plus three. And we're gonna set both of those equal to zero to solve for this problem. So t minus three equals zero. Well, that means t would equal three, and then t plus three equals zero. That means t equals negative three. The last thing we have to do with story problems is to just double check to see if they work. So how long will it take the object to hit eight feet above the valley floor? So we got two answers of three and negative three. Obviously it wouldn't take negative three seconds, so we can cross that off. The only answer that works in this real life scenario is three seconds, and there we go. So this wraps up the review here, guys. Uh, make sure you guys go over this. If you have any questions, uh, ask. Uh, take a look at the optional review before the test. I think that would be a good resource. But other than that, I think you guys should be all right. Okay, so this pretty much wraps up the review. Have a good one. I'll see you guys later.